Can let it go, Tiana. Morning, everybody. It's Tiana and Scott trekking with Tiana, and this morning, well, it's six o'clock, um, and I've decided to take her up Benahi today. She's there. Benahi Visitor Centre, which is uh, the highest point around my local area. Have a quick look at the map here. So that's the Visitor Centre. It's all shut, of course, because of the uh, COVID-19. But you can see the map here. We are going to go from here, you are here, up here. We're going to go straight up to Mother Tap. That's the most recognisable point. 518 metres, it's not that very high. But actually, Oxen Craig is the highest point. Nearly 530 metres. So we're going to go to Mother Tap. So we'll just have a wee wander. Um, lots of signposts that tell you where to go. And you can see the signpost here. For Mother Tap. Just there. And basically, what happens is uh, you can... Uh, it takes probably about... It doesn't take long. probably takes about 40 minutes to 50 minutes to walk up to the top of Mother Tap. Uh, but there's a... A forest bit and then when you come out of the forest you can see you get out onto the uh, sort of the side of the hill itself and uh, you can kind of see from there the top of it it's quite steep though I would say one of the things I would say is it's uh, it's pretty steep so it would just be um, you know it's it's an easy easy enough walk it's just uh, just relatively steep in some parts of it and it, it's icy in the in the winter as well actually if anybody's wanting to come up in the winter it's nice in the winter we, we were up here in october not quite the winter but it snowed and uh it was um it was very icy at the top it's quite slate but i'll tell you a bit more about that as we kind of get on and up the trail uh, so i would say that uh well, it's quite a nice walk at the bottom, um, but yeah, as I said before, it's, it's quite it does get quite steep. Um, but uh, one of the things uh, about this uh, place up here, it's got a, it's got a, it was a fort. I think it's a, an Iron Age fort that was built at the top. It's also got some religious significance as well, um, from the Bronze Age. I think that's right, and also there was a battle, or I'm not sure if it was a battle. It was a battle fought around this around this area as well. So um, yeah, it's quite an interesting place to come see the sort of ancient wooded areas that we've got in the trail. So we will start to climb fairly shortly. As I say, it does get it's quite steep. Come on you, good girl, good girl, lovely smells, but early morning and very nicely actually, uh, it's a nice day, it's one of the, going to be one of the nicest days um, of January, uh, J uh, June, sorry, apparently down in London it's going to be 30, 30 odd degrees, well, that's it there, that's where we're going, the top of that. And it's pretty much straight up. Pretty much straight up. She's seen something, I don't know what she's seen. There isn't anything here. Right. Let's keep going, bud. Like this lead. So we came here once. I came here once with my parents. 
and uh, we didn't manage it. We got to the outside of the tree line and then uh, we had to stop and come back down. So the first time I actually came up here was last October. Um, which was which was great. So you can see that the path. Come on, then, come on, let's go. You can see that the path does narrow a wee bit. It does become a little bit less uh, stable under foot, but it's still relatively straightforward. Oh, look at that. Pretty stunning. Sorry, this is just my phone, so I've got no idea how to work the the contrasts and such like on it. But wow. Pretty stunning day. Morning what the hell of the day. Okay, so that's us a bit of the way up. Just stop for a wee bit of a breather. Because it is quite steep these parts. It's quite a steep steep wee climb but you're starting to get views of the surrounding area. Um, I just want to sort of say, you know, I said that uh, this place had a bit of a religious significance, but it can date, be dated back to the Bronze Age. Um, there's some standing stones in the area, uh, not just here, but over by Inch, which is a bit further inland. Um, told you there was a, I also said there was a fort um, but there's a number of standing stones but one of the things that's um, I didn't know until I started looking at this was actually that the significance um, is that I'll show you a picture I'll put a picture in the significance this uh, mither tap is what this this hill's called and uh, in Scottish it's mother top and the reason it's called uh, or it's called that is because it's uh, it looks like a female breast, and it's part of the um, sort of religious iconography, I suppose. But also, Benahi, believe it or not, actually means hill of the breast. So it's all got to do with lots of religious um, symbolism and things like that, dating way back. So I didn't know any of this stuff, but anyway. We're going to get our gear up back on and keep walking because she's warm today. She's warm today. Oh, that's us out above the tree line. Still got a wee bit to go. It's fairly steep there. Fairly steep all the way now, actually. There's the top. Just up there. Just way up to go. Some views. The countryside. Some views. Get out to see the out to the North Sea. Okay, almost there. Got a fair little walk today, but I think that there. Hope you can hear me. It's a bit windy. That there. I think it's the remains of the fort that was used to set up the top here. Iron Age, I believe. Excuse me. So we just have to go through there up to the top and we'll get some views. Well I can carry all this stuff up here. Whoa. God that. Looks so outrageous. I should say that uh, Ben He is actually a dormant volcano. Not dormant, extinct volcano, sorry. Right, not far to go. Just there. Okay, so hear me. That's us at the top. Benahy. Or Mother Tap, should I say. I think that one over there is actually the top of this extinct volcano. You can see the views.
is a couple of hours on the river. So other trails you can see coming up here. So that's us just having a cup of coffee at the same spot where we had stopped this morning on the way back down. Once the water's boiled, about the battle um, that was, uh, well, Historians disagree, and they don't really agree on where it took place. I'll let the water boil first and get my coat. Have my banana. If you can just see a tail over there somewhere. <laughs> let her off the lead. Well, she's around here. She's a thirsty dog this morning. It's a hot one today. It's actually quite cold at the top, but it's hot, it's hot, um, hotter, hotter when you get back down. Right, lovely boiling water. I'm going to just get off of this and make my coffee and then we'll come back. You chasing the flies, eh? Is that what you're doing? There's lots of them, isn't there? So I decided that I would have some porridge as well as my coffee, even though there's a rules of flat flies. So, this battle is supposed to, supposedly took place here. Lots of uh, historians kind of debate where it took place. But if MD's under the uh, impression that, uh, that Scotland or this up this region didn't get any Roman visitors, then they are wrong. Because I think it's at least three times the Romans came up here. Um, and it was a, about... 83, I just have to watch my porridge, 83 AD when uh, Ag Agricola, I think his name was, came up here. Um, now, the battle was called uh, Monus Gripe or Monus Gripius, depending on uh, depending on who you, how you pronounce it. I'm not entirely sure of the pronunciation, the correct pronunciation. But it was fought in 83 to 84 AD. Oh, she's back. Look, here she goes, back for some water. Um, and basically, it was fought between the Romans and the Caledonian tribes. Um, uh, approximately, approximately 30,000 on each side. Estimates vary but they, they reckon that the, the the battle itself may have been fought somewhere around here there's also theories it could have been anywhere down in Persia which is obviously a long way away um but there's there is some there is some Roman um sort of hill forts and, and things like that not hill forts but Roman um uh, is an archaeo archaeological archaeological site and uh, not far from here but they think that uh there was a pro yeah thirty thousand on each side um, and Tacitus, who is the Roman historian, reckoned that the sort of Scottish tribes or the Caledonian tribes got a bit of a hiding. And um, they, out of the 30,000, 10,000 of them were killed, and only 360 um, Roman auxiliaries were killed. Now, an auxiliary, if you don't know, um, is actually when, when Rome took over a, a country, they like conscripted, if you like, um, farmers and what have you, young you know boys and stuff, and they conscripted them from the local population into the army, and they were um, they were uh, they were known. Um, but they, oh, they did that because um, of of the local local knowledge that they had. So these guys, these three hundred and sixty that died, were actually from tribes of sort of southern half of the UK. Um, uh, auxiliaries, that's what they were called. Anyway, 360 apparently died and 10,000 Caledonian warriors died um, on the first day of the battle. But 
it does say when you, if you look it up it does say that the the, the caledonians and and one of the things that that's quite interesting i thought about this was that the caledonian tribes and the british tribes or the british tribes let's just say um they they never they tried not to fight the romans on um on their own terms so the romans were very good in, in battle formation on a plane and what have you where the general could have you know his his tactics and all the rest of it that was that was how they fought that was how they won but if you sort of hit and then run and hid like the the tribes did that's all kind of all they had they, they had better odds so they say so they, they they fared much better and actually that's what it says on the second day so on the second day they actually they actually that's what happened they run into the trees which you could imagine around here and then they kind of hit and hit and hit and, hit and run tactics guerrilla warfare i suppose i mean let's be fair you know the Romans. That part of it, that part, that that battle was almost the sort of climax of of the, that 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 period of of subduing the the British tribe, shall we say? Um, but what's really I found really very very interesting was uh, Tacitus was um, well he was an historian and a, and a and a poet and playwright whatever else he was. He was also um, Agricola's. Uh, um, uh, son-in-law so i think and if you read up about it basically i think that uh, it was vastly blown out of all proportion that the size of the battle the size of the, not the size of the battle but the size of the victory and subsequently agricola when he went back to rome apparently he got posted elsewhere um to the sort of the the displeasure of the emperor um so it really doesn't make much sense that he had a, a massive a massive win up here um, whereby he, uh, you know, he subdued all the British tribes because clearly, if he had, he would have, he would have got, uh, you know, a, a triumphal march, which I don't think he did get. So it's quite interesting, and um, when you when you kind of put all that together and, and understand that. Anyway, that's the Battle of Monus Monus Gripius or Monus Gripe, um, and I'm going to now have my porridge and my coffee. Well, that's us almost back at uh, the bottom of the. The bottom of the hill, up there, just past the trees, Ooh, you can see it. Mother top, very he. Lots and lots of stuff happened around here. Way back. Lots of rich and varied history. Kevin has a happy bunny. She's off the lead now. He doesn't like that lead very much, so. But, hey ho. Well, I would just like to say, if you've watched this, thank you very much. Um, I'll put some pictures on Instagram as well, because that's what I always do. And, uh, yeah, maybe we, well, the next time, hopefully, we will be camping, if that's just the back garden, because I just still don't think you're allowed to do the, uh, oh, Camping outside, you actually. I meant to say it stopped this on the way up. This is a wee, I don't know, bothier house or something. Oh, loop. You seen something? Come on, this way. Come on. Wee house. Old ruins. Come on to you. Oh, jeez. He's about fell over there. Old oh, rock. Not looking where I'm going. Anyway, I'd like to say. Thank you very much. To you, I'd like to say thank you very much. And uh, we'll see you next time. Hopefully it'll be uh, camping. <laughs>